right, hello guys, and welcome back to the Grease Comedy Video Channel. Today's video will be continuing 25 Days of Winds of Winter, and today we're going to be doing Theon Greyjoy. Now, this is a character that I haven't really talked about my predictions since my 1,000 subscribers special. Uh, I also did a video like 10 months ago, so yeah, definitely needed to update this video. Um, we're going to be talking about Theon and where he's going to go in Winds of Winter and A Dream of Spring. Will he even make it to A Dream of Spring? I personally think he will, but we'll get into it as we get in there. But if you guys like to like, subscribe, and comment, please do it off channel you know, Gridgefield. I like this content as well. Also, thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers. We hit that yesterday, so I wanted to give you guys a big thank you for that. Actually, as you guys are seeing this, it's probably like a week ago or so. But thank you guys for that as well. So let's get into Theon. So Theon is in a very bad spot. He has been captured by Stannis, which again, much better situation. He's upgraded a little, not a lot, because Stannis still wants to kill him. But at this point, Theon probably just wants death. I mean, you look at the sorry state of Theon at this point, where we think he had it bad in the show. Like, we just show only viewers think Theon had it bad. Theon is unrecognizable in the book. He is aged tremendously. Um, his hair is basically gone out or it's grayed out. He's lost teeth, his fingers, and he's lost fingers and some of the, it's just, Theon is very much a different person. Like, the trauma he has sustained is much worse than on the show, in my opinion. And it's even more horrifying because we didn't even get to see it. So we see Theon and then we see Reek. There's no, tra we don't see the transition there. We just... Boom, into Reek. So, something I want to talk about that's going to be key for Theon's development as a character, or coming out of Reek, is Winds of Winter, to me, is going to be a book where he is going to work through more of his trauma and getting back to being Theon. I think the rest of Theon's arc and journey throughout these last two books will be finally coming to this idea of accepting and being happy with who you are. And... That is something that I think a lot of people relate with. I think it's a great motivation for Theon's character that I think a lot of people can get behind because Theon is a character that starts out as someone I don't think a lot of people like. He comes off as very cocky. He doesn't take anything seriously. I mean, think about his first appearance in A Game of Thrones. I did this in my chapter uh, reread. He kicks a Night Watchman's head after it's just been taken off. He He's a person that is very lusty. He He's just not a great person. And I think what Theon is going to be doing is atoning for his sins and working through those things and trying to help the people that he may have wronged in the past, notably the Starks. So let's talk about how Theon doesn't die instantly right off the bat with Stannis. Now I talked about yesterday with Asha's video that I think it's a little peculiar that Asha has said, hey, Stannis, if you're going to kill Theon, do it at a weirwood tree. Well, this doesn't really make any sense from Asha's point of view. Why would she want Theon to be killed there? And again, we come to this idea that the Northmen believe, right? They believe that someone cannot lie under one of these trees. So if Theon starts saying that he'd never killed Bran Rickon, and that maybe Wyman Manderly who I think the managers are going to flip sides, are here to witness this trial, maybe Theon actually survives. And I think he does survive. I think he has much more to add to the story, and I don't think this is the way that he will go out. Regardless of that being said, I think Theon stays a prisoner of Stannis. Because let's think about it, right? Yes, Theon did or I should say did not kill Bran Rickon, but he still does kill two innocent people. He still betrays the Starks. He still has a very red ledger. He's caused a lot of pain and sufferings for a lot of people. Um, and something I think that Stannis will recognize is that, again, there's this idea that is, is perfectly crafted that one good action does not wash out a bad action, and a bad does not wash out the good, and that's kind of one of Stannis's main motivations right and i think he will see that so i still don't think the Greyjoys is just gonna get to leave scot-free where i think this will lead is that as stannis takes winterfell and as the wall falls i believe that stannis you know trying to hold the north trying to buy as much time for the rest of the people to get south and to regroup and have their main force be at the neck 
I think Stannis will hold, try to hold Winterfell against them and buy as much time. What I think will happen, because I think Asha will be our POV into this moment, where I think Asha and Theon will finally be released by Stannis to either do a couple things. Seeing that Asha has been helpful to Stannis for this amount of time, that he will just release them and say, you know, try to get the Ironborn to be united and to go against this threat because he sees it for how bad it could be. And also things like trying to let them escape and atone for their own sins, trying to be better people than they have been in the past. So I think that Theon and Asha together make their way south to the forces of the living. And this is where I think the story takes a turn. I think you can go a couple of different ways with Theon's story. I think Asha at this point goes back to the Iron Islands to rally the Iron Islands under her cause. I think she will be in control of the Iron Islands by the end of the story. I believe at this point, Euron probably would be will be dead. I think he'll be captured and or killed at Old Town. Victarion, I think, will probably die to Daenerys, um, just based upon the fact that he wants to marry Daenerys, and he also wants the dragons. I just don't see that happening. I don't think that's going to work out for Victarion. So I think Victarion, at some point, will end up dying there. So I think that leaves Asha to kind of control the Greyjoys, and I think she will... Or not the Greyjoys, but the controlling the Iron, the Ironborn. And I think we'll have a nice arc for her that I talked about in yesterday's, yesterday's video. But Theon could either, one, go with Asha and support her claim. Which I could see that happening. That does make a lot of sense because, for one, having a male's backing would be very beneficial to her. Especially from someone important like Theon. And also, Theon could tell the the Ironborn what she has been through and how she's seen the dead and that, she, that we all need to unify. So, I think this is quite possible that Theon does maybe take a short trip to the Iron Islands. But I could also see the flip side of that. I could see Theon now being in close contact with, again, because Rickon, I believe, will be returned back to Winterfell. And with him and Davos, I think Bran will also come back, where I think Theon will realize that he needs to make up for what he's done wrong and f help fight against the others and just stand with the Starks. And I think the way Theon's whole plot ends is, I think by the end of the story in A Dream of Spring, maybe not even by the end, because I don't, I don't know if this conflict will actually reach to the end. I think there'll be other stuff that follows the others. But I think Theon gives his life fighting the others. I think by the end he is accepted who he is as a person and has finally like sought that validation that he's always wanted that he was a good person and his identity as a person is that he can be and this is something that again i think the story the story in the show did very well with theon's character theon is one of the very few characters i think the show understood and built upon correctly where theon has this major problem where he feels like He's a Stark, but his blood is the Greyjoys. And that is something that leads him to make his decision early in the War of the Five Kings that I think will come full circle, and he'll start to understand that he can be both. You know, he can, su he can support both sides and bring the two together, uh, more or less. And I think that's a really good parallel for him with, what you, with Asha, what she's going to be doing with the Iron Islands, and understanding that when you look at Asha as a character, she was very naive in the way that she sought to bring an alliance with the North. When she's first trying to become queen after Balon dies, she says, oh yeah, let's make an alliance with the North. That was never going to happen. Um, the North hates the Greyjoys. As we see, that's what Asha's journey has been about, is her starting to understand how, the Nor how other people think about the Greyjoys. So Theon, I think, will be going through that idea of his own his own identification along with him trying to get out of the reek and the mental trauma he has gone through but also the idea of trying to become a better man and someone that he can live with and not want to die because at this point he's always talking about you know how death would be would be better than what's going on now and i think he's going to go through that and eventually will find that inner peace within himself before the end and i think that's how theon goes it's not exactly a happy ending for Theon, but it's an ending that I think is very fulfilling and 
is great for the audience. Um, as I talked about with Stannis, Stannis, I don't think will get a happy ending in this this story either. But I think he'll get a very fulfilling ending for people that are Stannis fans. I think there's a cult following of Stannis. I'm part of it. Um, and I think there's a lot of characters like that in this story where when George talks about like a bittersweet end, which I think will happen. I think this is what he means with a lot of our characters where it's sweet as in our characters have meaningful growths, developments that come to a head and they make sense on how they end. And it's something that we can like, maybe not like that they die, but we can like for the characters of what they built to and where they came from and how they end. Now the bitter part will be, okay, well, these characters will be either dying or they'll have a tragic end. That's how I've always interpreted that. I, I also think you look at the brand thing where, oh, Bran Stark being the king. That's a cool idea. Um, it makes sense on the face value of it. But then bitter is in the old gods have kind of penetrated Bran. Is this the same character? That's kind of how I've always looked at it. But let me know what you guys thought about this video. I really enjoyed talking about Theon and Asha. Again, I think they have two of the more compelling story arcs in the entire series. And I really love the way George has set them up for Winds of Winter. So thank you guys all for watching the video. And I will see you guys tomorrow with, let me take a look who we're doing tomorrow. We are doing Edmure slash the Blackfish tomorrow. So I hope you guys are ready for that. We haven't talked about them in a while. So we're going to be talking about probably the prologue a lot and also the reverends a lot more in tomorrow's video. So thank you guys all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.